So I just want to pray tonight over everybody that's watching around the world, across America, from DC. You're looking at a wild church. Look where you are. You're gathered on the National Mall on a $47,000 dance floor. <laughs> and he's worthy of every last bit. Come on, I wanna sing a song of declaration. This is called, This Is Who My God Is. This is a song for the remnant church that I'm with here tonight. Come on, let's lift up a shout of praise tonight, come on.
say there is no one, no one. We say there is no one, no one. You are the king tonight. Oh, there is no one, no one who can stand in your way. There is no one, no one. Come on, let's just exalt him tonight. Just begin to lift your hands and lift your voice. Just begin to exalt his name. He's the king, he's the Lord. He takes precedence, he takes, he takes it all tonight. in D.C. It's always expensive. It's overregulated. It's ridiculous. It, it, it's caught, the sacrifice is costly. The airlines broke my guitar on the way here. Every time we come, it's a fight because you know what? The devil doesn't want you worshiping over this city. The devil doesn't want you proclaiming the truth of Jesus over this city. But guess what? You made it. You made it. Turn to someone and say, you made it. And guess why we're here? To remind the powers and the principalities, your time is over. Come on, somebody. We're here to remind them your season of ruling and reigning in darkness, in violence, in perversion, in the Antichrist spirit, your time is over.
because y'all are crazy. We are the crazy Christians that pray in front of the White House. We do prophetic things because we believe that things change. And as we were approaching this year, of course, we had a lot of cities we were going to, and our team was like, do we really want to go back to the mall? Do we really want to go back? And uh, it's such a hassle and difficult, and what about the weather? And we don't know if anyone's going to come, and uh, the aura, you know, there's, it's expensive. It's difficult. So we're weighing it with our team, and I just, this is our third year, and just so you know, no ministries do three years in a row of this on the National Mall. <laughs> Nobody is that crazy. Nobody is that fiscally irresponsible to create an offering like this to King Jesus. This is like a normal, listen, this is a normal like once every 10 year things that you might do. And you might do it like two times in 20 years and then be like, okay, we're done. But the Lord spoke to me as I was praying and he said, Sean, strike the ground. Keep striking the ground. Keep striking. Keep striking. No matter who comes, no matter the cost, no matter the difficulty, keep striking the ground. And I was, I was thinking of that story, you know, where Elijah was the last thing he said. He, he told the king, he said, why did you stop? Why did you stop striking? You had so much momentum and then you stopped. Well, he was probably tired like we all get. He's probably had really good Christian excuses. <laughs> we all have those. Kids, work, it's stressful, it's da, da, da. Yeah, we all have those. But what is the word of the Lord? What is he speaking over America? Are these prophecies and promises that we have, are they real or not? And who's gonna rise up and grab a hold of them? We gotta keep striking the ground. Three times, four times, five times. Maybe it'll take till time number 10, till things open, but you know what? We keep striking the ground. Are you with me? Come on, are you with me? We keep showing up, we keep praying, we don't give up, we don't grow weary in doing good. This is the end of a long year for us. We are running on espresso and the Holy Ghost right now. I don't know what we're running on, fumes, but glory fumes. However, sometimes you gotta grab onto the sword and let your hand freeze to it. I'm throwing out Old Testament Bible stuff. Y'all with me? This is, <laughs> this is good stuff. Here, okay, so this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna strike the ground like this. Come on, come on, get, get out your prophetic. Yeah, we're gonna strike the ground. We're here on the National Mall. Yes, everybody that's watching, we're crazy. We believe the Bible. So we're just gonna say strike, 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 strike. And we're gonna go to 10. We're gonna go to 10. Okay, and, on, and after we do 10, I don't know why 10, it sounds good. Because that would be 20, 30, oh Lord. Okay, we're gonna strike 10 times. And on the 10th time, we're gonna lift up a shout. We're gonna believe. We're gonna believe something is gonna shift. Come on, are you guys with me? This represents every single state in America. This represents the hope of the world, really. So come on, on the count of three, we're gonna go strike 10 times. Here we go. Here we go. One, two, three. Here we go. Come on. Strike, 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 strike. Now keep going. Strike, 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 strike. Keep going. Strike, 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 strike. Come on. Keep going. Keep going. Strike, strike.
victory. Come on, I see those flags, those banners of victory. Wave them over this city. Just thank him, just thank him tonight. Come on, just thank him. Just thank him, just thank him. Listen there, I'm, I'm so encouraged because there's so many heroes in the faith that have been praying and interceding and pressing in way longer than I've been alive. For the reverse of Roe v. Wade, for the shift in the nation. This is one of my pastors, Charles Stock from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Maybe the most joyful human being I've ever met. And I wanted him to come and share with us. All right. So good to be here. This is amazing. Two years ago, in the rain, something happened. Justice Coney... Amy Coney Barrett was confirmed, and the rest is history. Not It was just her, but it's all these little parts. And I want to talk about what happened this year from what was sown two years ago. The Dobbs decision that, that evacuated Roe v. Wade as a federal standard to be imposed on all states. So amazing. It happened. And it's going to impact the future in ways that are beyond our imagination. It happened, it was announced on June 24th at 10.10 a.m. None of this is an accident. At 10.10 a.m., murdering an unborn human being was announced that it's not a constitutional right in the United States of America. Why 10.10 a.m.? Why not 10.09? Why not 11.05? But it was 10.10. Immediately I thought of John 10.10. 10. It's a prophetic statement. The thief came to steal, kill, and destroy. But I've come that they might have life and they would have it abundantly, overflowing. It's a restoration of what was lost. Happened 49 years. 49 years from the original Roe v. Wade decision marking that we're moving into a jubilee season of restoration. Our nation had the blood of officially sanctioned murder of over 63 million babies, and that's just the ones that were counted. And here's the amazing thing. You're forgiven. You are forgiven because he delights to show mercy. When we repent, 
when we seek his face, when we humble ourselves, when we turn from our wicked ways, he hears from heaven, forgives our sins, and heals our land. We're believing that because Jesus is the mediator of a better covenant, a new covenant, and his blood speaks a better word than the blood of Abel or the blood of, of slaughtered infants. His blood is speaking over us. Forgive them. Forgive them. So what's next? What will it look like? What's, what's going forward? What will it look like? It's, <laughs> we're moving into Jubilee. We're, and this is so amazing how this unfolds. Do you know the leak, the Supreme Court leak, unprecedented? Well, you know, isn't that like those prophetic whispers that were whispering before the incarnation of the Word of God? All through history, there were, there were these whispers of something that was going to happen, and it came. Isn't it? I, I mean, God just flipped it on his head. And then it was announced at June 24th using our numbering system, 624. Why not? This, this has to do with the United States. 624, I thought of number 624, the first line of the Aaronic blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. And I just want to declare that's what's ahead. Though it's just a seed sown, it seems it's a small crack in all the issues facing us, we have the assurance of God that He is blessing and keeping His people in this land, and He will bless and protect this land. Uh, now, here's a wild one. I began to wonder, why June 24th? June 24th, and I didn't know this because it's not my background, but I looked up June 24th in, in, the, in tradition, you know, the historic church, Catholic Church, Orthodox Church, June 24th is the feast of the nativity of John the Baptist, the forerunner who worshiped in the womb. He worshiped Jesus in the womb, leaping for joy. John the Baptist, even before he was born, demonstrated there is not only life and dignity, but there is spirit and awareness in the womb. He worshiped, he leapt for joy, and his mother was filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you, there, this is, you couldn't make this up. At, at his birth, so here's, what does it look like going forward? At his birth, his father, Zechariah, who had been mute, just like we've talked about, why are the churches mute? Why haven't they spoken up? Why, why aren't they celebrating? Well, they're going to, because Zechariah, whose name means, I mean, you could stretch this to mean, it means the memory of the Lord, the memory of Yahweh. It means remembering the promises of God. What did the angel say to him? Gabriel said, Zechariah, your prayers have been answered. And he's thinking like, what prayers? You know, how do how can it? And so he had to shut up for a while. But after John the Baptist was open, he recovered his voice. So what's happening? There's a recovery of the voice in the national narrative of the United States. It's all, I mean, it's hinged on, it seems like such a small thing, but it's like this crack of light at the beginning of day. And Zechariah prophesied the day spring and declared his son that he would be the forerunner, that he would walk in the, in the ministry of Elijah. And so what's being loosed here through this decision, I believe is a John the Baptist ministry of Elijah that we're gonna see we're going to see the prophets of Baal destroyed. We're going to see the Jezebel spirit cast down from her high place. I'm just declaring this. So what, so what is it going forward? What's been released here is a John the Baptist moment forerunning a burning lamp. That, I mean, he was the last and the greatest of the Old Testament prophets. But, his, but when he was asked who he was, he said, I'm a voice. We are recovering our voice in the national narrative and in the world stage. I'm declaring it over you that this generation we're looking at that has been, has been, has been so damaged 
by a false narrative to, that they don't know what a, they don't know if they're a boy or a girl. I mean, recently, our most recent Supreme Court justice was confirmed and she could not define what a woman was. I want to tell you, every three-year-old knows what a woman is. So I'm just saying, let's get going here. But there's a voice and what's the voice doing? It's crying out, prepare the way. It's crying out a turning back to the Lord. It's crying out repentance, which means a renewal, transformation of the mind of the perception. I'm telling you, there's a shift. And it may, I mean, it may be like, well, it took 30 years before John and Jesus manifested who they were, but it was coming. And I'm telling you right now, it's coming. The voice is being restored and it heralds a new season. So I think I'll just stop there, but I do want to say we're going to see the end of sexual perversity and the sacrifice of infants. We are going to see it. We're not going to stop with one decision and apologize because it might make someone feel bad, but we're going to say that the tide has turned. So I just want to reach, just lift your hands. I just want to declare something over you. God, we just thank you for the jubilee that's coming. We thank you for good news to the poor, healing to the brokenhearted, liberty to the captives. We thank you for the opening of prison to the bound, the recovery of the sight to the blind. And we thank you for the year of the Lord's favor, which is Jubilee, and the vengeance of the Lord, which belongs to him, not us. It's a hallelujah. And I want to declare that lost voices are restored. Can we just say this, that our voice will be restored. The voice will be restored in pulpits across America, but not just pulpits, in conversations and coffee shops and backyard barbecues. The voice of the Lord is going to be restored and a mission movement will come from this generation that the enemy has tried so hard to destroy that will be a carrying of the gospel to the ends of the earth. God bless you. Come on, how many of you guys believe that? There was about three people that I, that, I, that I knew that believed, that believed that this could happen. Charles was one of them. <laughs> and, you know, I remember I, I was gathered here in the National Mall when I was 17, and, and that's where the Lord really gave me this burden to see the death decree of Roe v. Wade overturned. It wasn't a political thing for me. It was like a mandate from heaven to pray until it happened. And things got worse. <laughs> we started praying, it was like everything got worse. And, and, and people were appointed that were horrible. And then God, out of nowhere. I mean, do you realize how crazy this is? And so anyway, when this happened, when it was finally, you know, we mobilized 40 days of prayer and worship around the Supreme Court after the decision was leaked and then I was there in the Supreme Court the day after the decision and we were worshiping and I was so angry that there wasn't 100,000 Christians in the streets of America. I was like, this is the victory we prayed for. We can't rob God of the praise of this moment. And I was about to go on Twitter and Facebook and just rip into some people. <laughs> Seriously, I was getting my phone, my wife was like, oh no. And I felt the Lord, I hope the Holy, the Holy Spirit speak to me and say, don't do that. Instead, sing the song of life over a generation. Remind them that they are fearfully and wonderfully made. Imago Dei, made in the image of God. And so, this song we've been singing, Imago Dei, I want to sing it right now over the National Mall. And I wanna sing it as a representation over America. I wanna sing it over not just the unborn, but all the identity issues that a generation is battling. God made you the way that he made you on purpose. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. And so tonight I want all of you to lift your hands. Come on, we're gonna sing this as a song, as an anthem. Let me teach the chorus to you. Imago Dei 
I'm fearfully, wonderfully made in my God. There's glory in all you create. Sing it again. Imago Dei. I'm fearfully, wonderfully made. Imago Dei. There's glory in all you create. Let's sing this out together. Come on, just lift your hands with me. Just lift your hands tonight. Lord, release identity over America. Release identity. Release sonship tonight. Before I was formed, I was loved and adored by a Father who knows me by name. You sewed me together and buried your treasure inside of a soul and a frame. In my God, Fearfully, wonderfully, in my God, His glory in all you create. Woo.
pray over moms across America that are carrying a baby. Maybe they're alone. Maybe they're confused. Maybe they feel pushed into a corner. Melody's singing and worshiping tonight, carrying a baby inside of her. The first of 12. In Jesus' name, Sharabasa. Just feel it. 12 tribes of Melody. But why don't you do that? I want you just to pray. It's, and this, there's something so powerful about singing this with somebody that's carrying life inside of them. Just pray this over. And, and, and anybody struggling with their identity, tonight, I feel like something's going to break. So come on, just, just lift your hands up. Let's sing this. Oh, Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. Lord, I just lift up every mother who is in here right now. Lord, we thank you for mothers. We thank you for the strong spirit that you've given mothers. I pray, Father, for just an anointing of strength, God, to raise up a generation that is after your heart. I pray, Father, for the women here and the women on live stream who are struggling um, to bear child. We ask, Father, for a breakthrough in that regard. Lord, we thank you. We thank you that children are a gift from heaven. And Lord, anybody anybody here or on live stream who has ever made the choice to have an abortion and has lived with the shame of that and have, has lived with the grief of that. We thank you, Father, that there is mercy and forgiveness available. Through Jesus Christ, there is mercy and forgiveness available. So I ask right now, God, for that to be released over those, those bombs. I ask for that grace to be released right now. Father, we thank you that when we repent, you are so quick to forgive. You are so quick to forgive. And Lord, I thank you for a wave of adoption that's gonna come over this nation. I thank you, Father, for the wave of adoption. We prophesy that tonight. Oh God, the best years are ahead of us. We know it. And that is why the devil is making such a ruckus. Because the best years are ahead of us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In the beautiful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
Judges 4 and it says in Judges 4 that this woman was married to Lipidoth. You want to know what Lipidoth means? It means a fiery torch. Deborah was known for being married to the fire and the fire
I heard the Lord say over you, I'm proud of you. I saw him looking down and smiling. I saw the pleasure of the Lord on you. And here's what I declare over you this night. You haven't even begun to know his favor. Man, you feel that weight? Don't stop. Keep praying over them. Keep praying over them. I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, what am I supposed to pray over the voids? And he said, give them your word. The Lord said that this was a year of expanding territory. So we declare, come on, you feel that Holy Ghost? Did you want to feel those goosebumps? So we declare over you that it is your season of expanding territory. We declare 1 Chronicles 4.10 over you. We declare, oh, that he would bless you indeed. That he would expand your territory. I saw his hand of favor on you. And I saw him keeping you from evil. Come on, church, I need you to pray now. So we declare right now, every demon from hell, you have no authority over the void's life. I pray in a hedge of protection around them. I pray angels of war around them. I pray no more stitches on the kids. No more broken bones. I declare no more getting hurt. I declare right now the hedge of protection around them. Angels of war about them. I declare nothing can harm them. John and Kate, I saw you going from city to city, and as you made worship, worship prepared a way. I heard the Lord say, I'm giving you favor in America. I heard this, I'm giving you favor in all 50 states. I prophesy property being given to you in all 50 states. The house of Eli was the first in a capital. But I pray today, come on church, pray with me. Pray boldly right now. Pray in the Holy Ghost. I pray property. I pray land given to you. This ministry in every state. Oh, ah, uh, I saw. Uh, I saw the church coming around you in this next season. I saw the church supporting you. And as your friends, we repent on behalf of the church that did it. And we say, we are with you. We are with you. We are with you. I feel like we're supposed to do this prophetic moment. Listen, to the degree that you are with Sean and Kate, I want you to lift up a shout and a roar. Somebody shout.